Hey, Kendall Jenner. Hi. I came here to ask you 73 questions very, very quickly. Let's do it. Come on in. All right. So, here we are in the home you grew up in. Yeah. How often do you hang out here? Um, not too often anymore. What's your favorite memory in this home? Sneaking out late. What's your favorite holiday to celebrate in this home? Christmas. Okay. What is the most absurd nickname that someone has ever given you? Um, Killa, but I haven't been called that since high school. What was your first job? Dog walking. What's something about you that you wish more people focused on? My ass. What scares you the most? Um, losing someone. What angers you the most? Delayed flights. What makes you laugh the most? Um, my friend Tyler. What's your favorite curse word? Fuck. What is going on there? Mom, what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing a major renovation to your room. But what should I make it into? A planetarium. <laughs> so, what is modeling really like? Um, a dream come true. Where's one place you like to go and not be recognized? The beach. Okay, so this is your mother's closet. Wow, that is an abundance of shoes. Yeah. What's the precise number of shoes in that closet? Um, 73, but only sneakers. That's a good number. Best fashion tip you learned from your mom? Um, always to take care of my things. What is your must-have beauty product? Red lipstick. What's the worst beauty trend you've ever tried? Mm, plucking my eyebrows too much. What's the worst fashion trend of all time? Um, wedge sneakers. What's your morning beauty ritual? Drinking tons of water and brushing my teeth. What's your spirit animal? Tupac Shakur. Kendall, let's do a quick touch-up. Hi, okay. Do you have a secret beauty tip? Um, drinking tons of water. Do you have a secret hobby? Photography. Do you have a secret? If I told you, it wouldn't be a secret anymore. Okay, good to go. What's the most expensive thing you've ever splurged on? Um, my vintage car. What do you wear when nobody's watching? Nothing. What is your favorite thing you've ever worn? Um, anything a little controversial. Okay, here's an onslaught of sister questions. Okay. Who is your favorite sister right now? Um, Chloe. Who's your favorite to pose with at this current moment? All of them. Who is the funniest sibling and why? I think Kylie, because she's super sarcastic. Who is the craziest sibling and why? Drunk or sober. <laughs> Who is the neediest sibling and why? Um, none of us. We're all super independent women. Which sister's closet would you love to raid? Um, Kim, always. What's one thing only you know about Kim? Um, she can do almost anything with her toes. What's it like being an aunt? Great, because I can give them back. If Kim has another kid, what should she call him or her? Um, South. Can you name four other names that start with K? Kat, Katie, Karen, Cassandra. That works. <laughs> Favorite movie of all time? Um, The Notebook. What movies made you cry the hardest and laugh the hardest? Cry the hardest, Marley and me, and laugh the hardest, Bridesmaids. Okay, you can only dance to one song for the rest of your life. What song is it? Whitney Houston, I Want to Dance with Somebody, of course. If you joined the Spice Girls, what would your name be? Kitten Spice. If your life was a song or movie, what would the title be? Um, it ain't as easy as it looks. Okay. What is the craziest time you've ever had with Gigi? Um, one time we were in Cannes and pulled an all-nighter and ended up in Monaco. What is your nickname for Gigi? Ouija. Using the fewest words possible, can you explain to me how you are related to Gigi? Um, so her stepdad is my half-brother's stepdad, ex-stepdad. Does that make sense? <laughs> Not at all. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Do you read internet comments? No. What's the funniest thing you've ever read about yourself on the internet? That I'm having Justin Bieber's spirit child. What do you want to say to your fans? Uh, I love you. All right. What's the story behind this Instagram photo? Um, this is me getting ready for an event with my stylist and my seamstress in some sick boots. What's the story behind this Instagram photo? This is me and my sisters at my sister's baby shower having some sister time. What's the story behind this Instagram photo? This is my always mood. Will you post a selfie of you and me on your Instagram? No. Let's go to the pool. <laughs> Name one thing you cannot live without. Pasta. Kendall. Hi. I just had a baby. What should I do to celebrate? 
Maybe go hang out with your wife. <laughs> what TV show would you kill to make a cameo in? Uh, The Bachelorette. Do you have a favorite episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians? Yeah, probably the one where I did prosthetics with my sisters. Would you ever do a spinoff? No, I like working with my family too much. What are three things you look for in a man? Uh, confidence, good sense of humor, and great style. Who did you have a crush on when you were younger? Benny the Jet Rodriguez. All right, what was your first memory? Um, me running down the halls in my house in a little leopard coat. Who would make you totally starstruck? Angelina Jolie, of course. All right, favorite place to visit that's not a home? Palm Springs. Do you have a hidden talent? Yeah, I can make bird noises. Prove it. <laughs> Kendall, get your ass in here. What was the name of your first pet? Uh, Harley. Yes, mom. What's up? Well, I finished your planetarium and wanted to know what's the most embarrassing thing that your mom's ever done? Maybe this, all your magazines. Love you. Love you. If you had to choose another career, what would you do? Um, probably working on a farm somewhere. How would you describe yourself in three words? Um, I'm a weirdo, I'm motivated, and I'm jet lagged. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Um, gosh, probably to be invisible whenever I want it to be. What's the biggest surprise you've ever had? Maybe when one of my sisters got pregnant or when Kanye proposed to Kim. What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, treat people the way you want to be treated. What advice would you give your younger self? Don't wear that. What do you hope for by the time you're 30? Um, happiness, love, and a family. What are you doing immediately after this interview? Going to the gym. This body doesn't do it itself. All right, last question. Before I leave, can I film you with some crazy filters on your face? Thought you'd never ask. Okay, so here you are with some insane eyeballs. And let's see what else we have. Uh, oh, looks like you have a beard now. Okay. Uh, do that bird thing again. Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's enough. That's I'm going enough. now. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye! <laughs>that I decide to do each day really depends on my mood. It depends on how I feel. Sometimes I feel more casual and I want to dress it down and I don't want to put on anything. Or, you know, I'm like, I have a look in mind. I know what I want to do. I woke up inspired or I saw a photo and I just want drama. It just depends on how I feel. Putting on makeup is like putting on a costume. You know, it's exciting. You get to become this whole other person and this stage persona and you know I enjoy it I, it I think it's fun for me it's just fun it's a bit of a character like I, I love sort of everything mid-century I love the you know 40s 50s early 60s and then nowadays there's sort of this rockabilly subculture particularly in Southern California so it's sort of taking what I love about mid-century and then making it times 10 you know or sort of added the new age rockabilly to it and it's just fun I've had people tell me, even when I don't have makeup on, if I just have on maybe like some type of highlight or something, you know, people, oh, you seem really confident. Oh, cool, thanks. You know what I mean? And that makes me feel beautiful. I feel beautiful when I'm getting to interact with fans, you know, after the performance and, and they're just telling me their story and they're telling me about how, oh, this music's inspired me this way. Or like when I have makeup draining down all my eyes and, you know, you'll have fans who just appreciate the music so much and they'll just come up and be like, oh my gosh, you look so beautiful. And I'm like, wow, it's just love. You know what I mean? Like that is just real love. Cause I'm like, girl, this eye mess everywhere. <laughs> I feel beautiful all the time. <laughs> Not in like an arrogant way, but you know, I feel cool. Yeah. <laughs> I love having super dramatic eyeliner. It kind of will change the shape of my eyes a little bit, you know, and it really looks like sort of caricature. Um, so I draw my eyeliner out to there. I would usually play with like some form of red or orange lipstick, but I'll sometimes go to purple or change my lip shade. I'm always trying to achieve Lucio Ball's lips, her lip color and her lip shape. I'm just looking for those lips all the time.
Jacobs. You know, I collaborated with Taboo Stephen, an artist who I've known of and known for a long time. I was uh, the muse of the collection. As you can see by this beautiful sweater, it says Taboo, that's my name. The eyeball, that's the way I do my makeup when I do drag. And I did the makeup on Mark Jacobs for one of the shots. That's what I'm doing here. He worked on a lot of the figurative art, like the crow, raven, and the cats, the mice. In my day, drag can be whatever you want it to be. It shouldn't ever be one thing. I guess I take the idea of a fashion show seriously. A show is a show and therefore meant to entertain and make people think. But this was a completely different thing because this was high end, this was luxury. This was going to be fun to work on. And I don't have any rules for anything. In my adult years, I moved right to New York City and landed at this thing called the Pyramid Club. It was art themed, like there were art performances and art dance and arty bands and I would make flyers for these things. So then they started putting them in magazines and newspapers and then I started getting a fan base, I suppose. So he saw it, oh, Taboo, I love Taboo, oh yes. I'm working on this new collection about an old New York City goth kind of thing. Taboo fits right into this. In fact, I sell Taboo's book in my bookshop. There's me, photo by Stephen Mizell. There's me. I come up to the studio, and there on a the wall, they had like 35 images of me. Me in drag, me in my flyers, me in my paintings. I'm like, okay, they want me. And every single thing I submitted, they loved it. Oh, we love it, gorgeous. We love it, gorgeous. Give me some more. How about this? Oh, we love it, we love it, we love it, we love it. I'm like, more? Sure. Okay, now we want some really fancy high-end couture. We want a cape and a coat. So then they bring me the pieces of fabric, all individually cut out, but not put together yet. So all I did was go, and voila, it was done. Then they showed me some of the stuff they're working on, and I was like screaming at the top of my lungs, like, oh my god, I can't believe it! Because it was wild to see my stuff all glammed up. You know, the great thing about being an artist, for me, is freedom to be myself. So people say, oh, I recognize that taboo touch. And it's like, okay, that's me.